Hey, 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 hey. Ew. What the what hell sort of B-roll Nama Jama is this? Skyrim? Yeah, dude. Straight to Bethesda, huh? Skyrim. Because we were discussing our uh, our Bethesda fantasies. Well, first, let's, let's talk about the battlefield thing that you brought up really quick. Are you ready to see oh, it? God. I talk about that shit every day, bro. Battlefield or Warzone? Yeah. What are you talking about? Battlefield. Is it confirmed modern day? Battlefield. Oh. Yeah, you act like you have something to show me. No. Yes. It's been theoretically confirmed modern day, like Battlefield 4. And that's what you want. This is what the world wants, Michael. You want the helicopters back? Was Battlefield 4 more popular than 1 and 5? Or 1 and V? Oh, I don't know. It's hard to really test popularity based upon just the growth of video games in general and how many people is retained through time, especially now with the modern, more modern society. They win battle because you're talking years and years since Battlefield 4. So it's I just, hard to part of me, this, yeah. part it of me loves that slow play. Now, like I think it. Go ahead. The best Battlefield ever, three and four. Part of me just loves that slow play. Because in like Battlefield 1 and 5, when you're sniping, you don't have like this 12 times scope. You don't have anything like that. It's, I have like a 3 times scope and I have to really figure out the drop on this. Modern day, like we see in Call of Duty, which isn't really comparable, but it's like 500 yards. I'm going to zoom right into it and look at the freckle on your face and I'm going to drop this sucker. I just like I just think there's a skill thing, you know. I like the slower play, the more boots on the ground. Take away the helicopters. I think that there, it's it's its own thing. It's its own right. There's different skill sets that you need. It's a lot harder to be good at a fast-paced game than it is at a slow-paced game. 100%, you think so? Hundred percent tougher. Hundred percent harder to be better at Call of Duty than it is to be better at Battlefield. One hundred percent. I wonder if we had guys that were on Battlefield hacking what that would look like. Not as punish, not as bad because it's not as punishable. You know, no more health. You want to go ahead and get into the the Bethesda stuff really quick? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, for, first of all, first of all, this is episode three. Just so I have it for the, just so I have it for the channel and stuff, YouTube channel. This is episode three. Of our Ready Player Two podcast, we do this. Try to do this every week. Next week we'll be doing a uh, one live. Me and him will be both looking at the Xbox Game Showcase together for the first time that afternoon. I'm just gonna stay away from my phone to make sure we don't watch anything. So this is episode three. We're gonna be talking about our wildest Bethesda fantasies. What we like to see from Starfield, Elder Scrolls Six, and Fallout Five whenever those get released. Doc released a new music video called Alleyways. He's also been doing some oh. interviews here the past few days. Uh, we're going to talk about some Warzone hacking that Duel's been experienced and then kind of talk about our hopes to see from the Xbox showcase. Potentially. Oh so much pain in this podcast. Why? So many touchy subjects for me. Let's go ahead and start the touching with Bethesda. Let's start the touching. Let's start the touching. So they said the first game that's gonna, the first game they said is gonna come out is gonna be Starfield before Elder Scrolls, and they haven't even mentioned a Fallout Five. Haven't even really talked about that. They haven't talked that's, about shit. They haven't even talked about shit about Starfield. Like we know suppo- nothing. We should be getting some kind of showcase for them, right? Since E3 is canceled, they they have their own yeah. conference during E3. We should be seeing some kind of standalone conference from them at some point in the next month or two, really hopefully. So let's start off with uh, let's start with Starfield. Let's start off with you and like, what do you? <laughs> let's let's start off with you. Let's hear what you would like to see Starfield be. What is like, what's your ideal sci-fi game exploration that this game is like turning out to look like? What would you like yeah. to see from it? 
Okay. So, I want it to be, personally, less based around action. And I'd like it to be based more around uh, building, strategy, collecting, crafting. I want to see it... I want to see it built around that and uh in some sort of co-op implementation if there's some sort of co-op implementation mm. that'd be fantastic which isn't something that they normally do but to see something like that and have some co-op implementation inside of a sci-fi rpg open world open worlds uh, yeah Ooh. that'd be <laughs> fantastic uh i don't know what we're gonna get we literally hit no nothing Besides, it's in space, and it's Todd Howard's baby. So he's yeah. going to put all his love into this, because he said, literally, this is his baby. He's been wanting this for a long time. Uh, and before, you know, they've released RPG. There's, there's sci-fi. <coughs> excuse me, guys. Sci-fi open-world RPGs, but they didn't have much success besides Destiny, but I want to even consider that at this point. Uh, but they did before and just not the right time they didn't exactly take but i think now is the time i think they'll take what about you Michael? because i mean what other like sci-fi games are there really out there right now we got mass effect which is flopping hard they can't get their head out of their ass with that stuff i personally enjoyed andromeda i love the shepherd trilogy so they're still working on that all right we have no man's sky which shit the bed honestly in the very beginning people were very hateful towards that game because they put out all these huge expectations right, of what this game was going to be. They're saying this is going to be, uh, what's it called? Procedurally generated, like what Minecraft does. Each world's going to be vastly different. There's going to be amazing things for you to find. People started playing, and they said there's going to be co-op. People started playing the game. No co-op, no online play with friends at all. The procedurally generated textures and like worlds and stuff was terrible. There is very little difference in between each world. It was a complete flop. But now, I think they've made it free to play. They've like done a big price reduction on it. It's all on Xbox Game Pass, and they've made it co-op now. They've right now it's a great game supposedly. Well, that's what you get, man. Yeah, we have Astroneer. Fallout seventy six, Fallout seventy six, same fucking thing. Excuse the French, but yeah. they're releasing games that are not complete. They're releasing partial games, and they're just building them through over time. They're patching, 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 patching. Well, that's that's like the culture oh, we're in now. That's the culture right now, like Destiny. When those games were released, there is... Right. When those games were released, what pisses me off is that, like, early on, they had the game totally released, and they had, like, the Dark Below or whatever it was. The first one is called the first expansion. Yeah. People already seen it leaked, like, in the their data mining, and it was already complete. Already done. And they're just, like, they're just waiting three months, and then there's, like, boom, click a button. All right, $15, please. Add that well, to the main game. Yeah. I mean, I could see that. That is less egregious. Than That's promising egregious. something. Than promising and something. And not being able to deliver at all. Yeah. Yeah. Until a year later. So we have that. We have Astroneer. You could say that Destiny is a, ah, a sci-fi. Yeah. What? It's, an op it's a game where you can go to multiple worlds and stuff. Explore. Exploration sci-fi. It's not like a triple-A game where it's going to be, like, super hardcore graphics and, you know. But Starfield, what I'm hoping to see from it, just take Mass Effect Andromeda. I would love to be able to see you have your own little spaceship. You know, maybe you start off on some kind of a world and you're set up on some kind of this, this adventure. You're, like, just a little little schoolboy and you, have, you make your own little rocket and you have to go through this huge story arc. You know, you're upgrading your ship, you're making your ship, you're bringing people on to help with your ship. You have a bigger, bigger ship. Bam, you become a commander, you're exploring. People from these different planet governments are, like, needing your help to do different things around their planets and their moons. And then you're becoming, like, this all-star badass. The police of the galaxy. Something like that. I want to see extreme customization, ship customization, exploration. I don't want to see... I don't want a linear story. I want it completely open. And but let me fly to the planets. No. I want Microsoft Flight Simulator, but in space. And to be able to get out and do stuff. 
I want really deep, this is like anybody, want a really deep story. I want to be able to fly in between planets. I don't want this fast travel shit where I, you know, I dock at a planet. I go into this little hub on my ship and I'm like looking at this holographic projector. Where do you want to go to next, Captain? You don't want to go here. Boom. 17 minute loading screen. We land on a moon. I don't want that. I want to sit in that seat. I want to look out the window and I want to take off from the planet and go up. You break to the atmosphere. Boom. <laughs> Where do we go? You're not gonna have loading screens. There's SSD next gen. But they'll still find a way. <laughs> uh, so Thomas made a very, very good point <clears throat> that there's some games where loading screens are kind of helpful and essential. Not necessarily essential, but they're helpful. And something that a lot of people like. Uh, like, for instance, just Skyrim. When you have a loading screen, what's on the loading screen of Skyrim? I don't remember. You didn't play enough Skyrim. I beat there's, the game. There's tips. There's tips and tricks. There's hints. There's lore. There's art. Uh, that, that's something that they're going to have to replace at some point in some way inside of the game. Make a deeper, more fleshed out story that incorporates that already. I shouldn't have to look at a book to get what the lore of the story is. I should be able to understand based on the storytelling. Well, some people, some people enjoy that. I'm one of them. I get it. And the hints and tricks, press start, go to menu. But there is some stuff that's conveniently placed. Like, I don't mind loading screens. Yeah, as but long they're not they going could... to say like, sorry, they're not going to say like, da-da-da-da-da, province is home to this mineral. You know what I'm saying? That's like a hint you're not going to see in a book. Like, you're not going to see at the start menu. But it should be. Like, if I'm working to, like, do minerals or I'm well, working on my mining, I should be able to go to somebody and, like, find a, you know, a book or something that explains to me where something is, like, in real life. I'd say, hey, so-and-so, where the hell do I find yeah, yeah. salt? <clears throat> I agree with that. I thought you just disagreed with that. With what? I want to be incorporated in the story, those, tip, those tips and tricks. Well, well, That's my thing. Like, I don't mind loading screens, but they need, like, it needs to be done in a tasteful way. I hate it when it's just like, boom, blank screen, here's a static image, loading in the bottom left, blah, 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 blah. Hate that. I love what Ratchet and Clank are doing with the next gen stuff. I know it's next gen. But, uh, or even, hell, Call of Duty with that lobby that you get in while the Warzone's loading. Give us something interactive. Yeah, yeah, right. something cool like that. Wasn't there like, remember Test Drive? You could play Pong. Oh my god. You remember that? That is such a throwback. You just picked so deep inside of my brain. You remember that though? I do, I do. I do the remember. simplest, the simplest game there is. But it helped. I do remember that. That's very interesting. Alright, let's move on from, uh, let's move on from Starfield and let's get into some Elder Scrolls. You're bigger into Elder Scrolls than I am. We have ESO, which is killing the game right now. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you want to see? Money. Yeah, what do you want to see from Elder Scrolls 6? Well, first off, <clears throat> the only reason they're rolling in the money is because the longer we have to wait for a new Elder Scrolls, the more people want Elder Scrolls. So, yep. And that's why every time I've returned to Elder Scrolls Online, is because I need to taste the Elder Scrolls. You know what I'm saying? Not because I'm necessarily a fan of Elder Scrolls Online, but <clears throat> I just want some of that universe. But uh, as far as the new game goes, uh, I would like to see more in-depth crafting. I'm a big crafting guy, and I feel like it was okay. <clears throat> like the skills, I love the skills. Like, make some more in-depth skill trees, you know. Follow mm, some yeah. of the things that these these mods have done for Skyrim. Mm -hmm. I hope they use that as a little advice and uh, help. And then their spells need a major upgrade. Uh, other than that, not many complaints with how they've done and handled the Elder Scrolls series. So supposedly we've already seen a, a leak has already came onto Amazon about a Xbox Series X and PS5 version of Skyrim. 
not buying that. You're not buying that. I, I, I'm done with Skyrim, bro. I've played Are so you? much Skyrim. Yes. Even I to play with, like, shaders times. and ray tracing? No, I don't care. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> I'm done with it. I'm ready for a new one. I'm just gonna not play until the new one comes out. I'm just done All with right. Elder Scrolls right now. It's Damn. Just, I, I'm just waiting, man. It's been so long. Nine years. I, It'll I, be ten I've years. Played, there's no telling how many hours I have in Skyrim. And it's just, you know, at some point you just get over it. And I think that many years will make somebody get over it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, here's here's one. Fallout. Now, this is something that I'm... I don't know if I'm more excited about it than Elder Scrolls. But Fallout 5, a lot of people were extremely butthurt on the release of Fallout 76 because they're expecting it to be exactly what Fallout 5 was. Or, you know, Fallout 4 was. Just in Fallout 5. Yeah. And yeah. people were extremely butthurt. <clears throat> Big time. And yeah, so when I'm Fallout 76 sure. came out, people were pissed off. But I don't think, personally, that Bethesda miss, uh, what's it called, mismarketed this game. They were pretty clear about what it was going to be. There's not going to be any NPCs. You're going to be one of the Whoa! first people in this world. They were Let clear about that. Let me stop you right there, Chief. Let they me stop you right there, Chief. I don't agree at all. Okay. That's what they said. Yes, but they that's not the problem with Fallout 76. That's not the I, issue at all. I enjoy the hell of it when it, day one I loved it. No one played day one. You're full of shit. There was a 50 gigabyte patch day one. 50 like gigabyte patch day one. Every, not every day game one. Has a, bro, there's always a day one a patch, patch every single game. Every there was game. a patch because, bullshit there is a patch because it was not <laughs> playable it was not playable bro 99 percent right. of any game that gets released nowadays has a not day one patch 50 gigabytes doyle we're getting 80 gigabyte patches for modern warfare for trees michael you're you're a fanboy i understand this fallout 76 was a piece of flaming shit when it was released why? There is bugs on why. top of bugs. Servers Bethesda. were asked. Never experienced any. Literally, I've never experienced that. Oh my god. You didn't play enough. Dude, there was, mean, got, it was bad. I so, my personal you. experience. I know the reviews. Some of the reviews were shaky. I played the hell of it. I got a level Stop. 50 or 60. Ah, I never under, experienced any bugs. I never experienced any Bullshit. server issues. You never okay. You never walked out. You never walked out to an enemy, and they had they are holding a gun, shooting right at you. But the gun was pointing off in their no. hand sideways, like no. cow, cow. No. I don't believe you. <clears throat> Why would I lie? Huh. I call shit out all the time. This game. I just think people were really butthurt because it wasn't what they wanted it to be. And I think but this was oh extremely clear what it was going to be, and then it dropped. Next topic. Can't fucking disagree more. It was the worst release of any game ever. Oh my god. Any ESO was just as bad. Games. ESO was just as bad. No. See? No. There you go with your fanboy. Fanboy. No, I, pl I played both games a lot. I played ESO. I, I probably have 80 hours in ESO. And most of that was when it first released. And Fallout, ESO was, I have at least 30. ESO was notorious for a very bad launch. A lot of break. bugs. Oh, my game never broke in Fallout 26. Dude, literally, they let, they, you could hack into the dev room. And the biggest problem is how Bethesda dealt with the cheaters. Uh, I mean, they just started... I mean, anybody watching this, go to the Fall of 76 on YouTube. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Just watch that shit. I like what they did. Bethesda, at least they're, at least they're taking care of cheaters. At least no, they're, they're not. They took care of everybody that was a high level because they suspected they were cheating and started permabanding anybody. They took that care of that one level. guy. That one guy you're talking about. Oh, tons of people. Tons of people. They banned My... him and asked him to write an essay or essay explaining how they were cheating so they get their accounts unbanned because they couldn't figure out how people were cheating, getting into the dev room and stealing and duplicating high-level uh, items my personal opinion 
from what I played and experienced. I thought the game was solid as hell. For an open world MMO game, I thought it was amazing. And nowadays, it's amazing. With the Wastelanders DLC, it's a lot of fun. ESO in 2015 had a really shaky ass start. Big time. Destiny had some shaky spots big time in Destiny 2. A lot of those games, it takes it takes a few games. I can because they're all MMOs. It, those games take a few years to get their legs under them. Awfully bugged out. ESO was, had some bugs, some glitches. Okay. And then you're talking about Destiny. Destiny was one of the cleanest games ever released. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see the problem with Destiny. The game was clean, but people were extremely mad about all the like the things behind the paywalls the lack of content was terrible there's nothing to do in game you had one raid and they promised a huge that's, open expansive world you that's could do a stuff. content problem <clears throat> that's a content problem that's not that's not shitty ass devs i'm telling I, you bro. i love bethesda i love bethesda you know this i know you're you know, riding on that eso i'm riding on bethesda because i've played all types of bethesda games but Fallout 76 was their worst game that they've ever released. You, I know you say that. I know you've watched videos of people not having a good time. I have never I have experienced my, a my, single, my, single game-breaking thing. I have my own opinion. Just because I watched a video doesn't mean that's what I believe, what they're saying. I have my own thoughts on it. I think it was the worst game, the most bugged-out game they've ever released. But like with MMO games? you don't games, think so, you're delusional. I call me delusional. I never experienced anything that made me think this was buggy. But regardless, MMO games, I will give them a couple years to get their feet under them. It's natural. Well, that's fucking... That's very submissive of you. <clears throat> Why? Because they release a game and it needs to be a fucking game and not half a game. But it's nice that you do that. Unfortunately, only 10% of the population that plays video games is probably that way. I think it's good to give them a chance. People. I'm not developing games. You're not developing games. You're right, but the other people want what they pay for, which most people should want what they pay for. Okay? But people need to be realistic. We've seen ASO launch, and it was like, well, oh, okay. Michael, you're telling me right now that Fallout 76 wasn't released as a cash cow because they've seen ESO doing good and bringing in money. Look at the Atom Shop and tell me that their prices aren't egregious. And the only reason they released that, and they've Dora. done it multiple times, limiting items in the world of Fallout 76, so you would feel more, uh, you'd feel more like you had to buy certain items from the shop. Name so any game. Stim, name any game with a battle pass. Name any game with a battle pass that does not do that. Look at the Call of Duty battle pass where you earn through those hundred levels. It's an item shop. Season pass. They Look put at what you earn. Items in the item shop. They put essential items in the item shop. Like what? You That's get what everything essential you need. If you want those extra things to no, get. They, they stopped putting as much water in the world. Purified water. They stopped putting as many stems, as much ammunition. And they started selling it in the item shop for atoms. This is, this is, this it happens. You buy a that water purifier. That is egregious, dude. I look at those things that you could buy, that you could buy in there, almost like cheat codes. Like, hey, you, you don't have enough money to get any of the, the water purifier stuff. That you haven't built a settlement. Game. It ruins a game. It forces you to make a settlement and uh, get a water purifier. If Jimmy, if Jimmy fucking D over here can spend 100 bucks and completely destroy me because he has money, it ruins the game. That's what That's happens what to the MMO. That, that, that's what happens with a bad MMO. And that's what's like, You're not going to wreck somebody with water. With water. But well, you can if you have fucking mini nukes. If you buy mini nukes for your fat You can man, only get those through codes. You have to run around and get the little nuke keys. You don't know what a mini nuke is. You shoot it I know, out it's a gun, gun yes. I understand. I play the game. You don't need nuclear keys for that. Can you buy ammo in the shop? For mini nukes? Yes, that's what I'm saying. To this day. They, at one point, stopped putting as much ammunition in the game. And they started selling it on the Atom Shop. Ammunition for Atoms. 
and they're like, I just don't ah? think, I don't think that's like overly egregious. I think any game with a season pass or battle pass purposely puts their best content and best cosmetic gear and best items in the store. Any game, yeah, not, Call of Duty, Fortnite, resources. Rocket League. Now, could you imagine having to buy bullets for Call of Duty on Red the Dead battle does pass? That? GTA 5 does that where you spend your you buy your little shark thing you get extra money like you buy you spend 20 bucks to get a couple million dollars so you can buy extra yeah, shit in game earn, you can earn that okay you can earn money in GTA you can earn money in that and buy the bullets you can't earn atoms in Fallout 76 yes you can you buy them how do you earn atoms you find out by doing it by doing achievements and like you can find water, you can find ammo, you can build an ammo station. Next subject. I don't agree with this, but we agree to disagree. <laughs> okay. Doc. We spent way too long. Let me pull this up. This fight, we're just having some friendly debating. So you're excited for Fallout Five? <laughs> no, fuck Fallout. I'm done with Fallout. You're done with it completely? Did you like Fallout Four? Yeah. I, dude, Bethesda's on thin ice with me. EA and Bethesda both. I got you. All right, let's. Uh, I'm like way more into uh, CD Projekt Red now. Like, I think they're the next Bethesda. I, I like that. I like that. All right, let's, let's go ahead and up. Uh... Yeah, I agree. Let's go ahead and pull up. So, Doctor Suspects. A few days ago, he dropped this little. Uh... Hey, what's up, Mike Eller? Thank you for joining us to the chat, buddy. Sorry, just now getting to your comment, dude. Um, <clears throat> but a couple days ago, Doc put out this little teaser. Of him in an alley, it's zooming in, and he's like, "It wasn't my fault," or something like that. It was out of my hands. Um, and today, he just put out a new music video, I guess, called "Doctors" or it's called "Alleyways," and we're gonna watch it for the first time together here and see what this Six is about. Six hours ago. Six hours ago. A half a million views already. You ready to watch this thing? Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. All right. On three. One. Two. Three. Go. Let's see. You said on three. That's yeah, I know. Three. I kind of backwards. I know. I don't know. Let's see what we got. He's so good. Is, Everything is this going to Is this going to be like an actual song? You think? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I think it is. Oh, this is it. He just released the whole thing. This is so smart. He's taking this whole incident and like just running with it and helping him. You can never take away the power of my Oh baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> We're gonna see him. Come on, dog, turn around. Yeah, it's out of my hands. It's only us the same. And this thing's blowing up. We're gonna see his face and zoom it in. Right now. Oh my god. We're gonna I see his face. Me. Kind of being able to see it a little can, bit. You can see parts of it, no? No? Nope. We god, miss you. Man. We miss you. Come back to us. That was so smart. He does it. You job, know? Brother. That oh, was so. He does the job. He's taking like a bad situation and turning it around completely, and just like building from this. It could be Doc 3.0, dude. Yeah, it just goes to show, Me man. There's no such thing as bad, uh, bad PR. Remember whenever he came back the second time, like how crazy it was, like how yeah. much better his stuff was. Yeah, this is Doc 3.0, baby. The quality's the same. Okay, so I've uh, got some interviews from him here. 
uh, talking to the Washington Post. So he came out finally this week and did some interviews. And in this interview, he says, uh, I've been dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety here lately. You know, my wife and I both, this is our livelihood. We worked really hard to get to this point. Let's just say I felt all of the emotions that you could possibly feel. Dr. Suspect maintains he still does not know why Twitch effectively voided his contract just a few months into a two-year exclusivity arrangement first reported by The Verge. He said, honestly, we don't know. It was a total shock. Imagine showing up to work and the doors are closed and you can't get inside. You're going, what's going on? And you've been told you've been fired. But you haven't been told the reason why, you're just given an answer. It was the worst feeling. Uh, he said that he learned the news while watching a friend stream on Twitch. He noticed that some of the features normally available to him as a creator were not present and sent an email to Twitch. And they replied the company informed him of their action but did not provide a reason. Bro. Good God. So that was one of his first interviews he did when he came back out and, uh, you know, after two, three weeks of not talking at all, he came out and said that. Yeah, I will say that there's a couple things in there. I love Doc, don't get me wrong, but there's a few things in there that are kind of uh, contradicting. You can tell it's kind of a theatrical thing. I think he is hyping it up, but there's two contradicting statements in that, in that, uh, that interview. Like what? what which those, two? those statements are, imagine showing up to work and the doors are closed, which would insinuate that he showed up to stream, went to go stream, yep. not a Yep. But then he also said that he found out while he was watching a stream and that he sent an email and then they were sent a response. So, I don't know. That could have, I mean, I don't know. We don't hear his actual words, so that could have just been how they... How yep. they worded it, I don't know. I don't know if it's verbatim or what. Well, he did say he's not going to sign any more. Go ahead. No, go ahead. He did say he's not going to sign any more exclusivity deals uh, going forward at all with Facebook or YouTube. He may just stream on his own his own thing. So we'll see what he does. Yeah, hopefully he does. <clears throat> I feel like he would be the guy to launch a new platform. I hope he does. Um, you want to go ahead and get into the experience that you had with as far as Warzone hacking? I think me and you experienced that the other night with the, the crossbow guys. Yeah, so funny. Yeah, we experienced that. And so, so then I get in the lobby with some Randys. They had a LFG post up, joined it. They said they wanted to be aggressive, so we we're pushing. We noticed that the circle was starting to close. And like the first circle, okay? And if you're familiar with Warzone, you know there's still quite a few people left. First circle closing, Michael. Yeah. 40 people left in the game. Yep. 40 people left. Yeah. What the fuck? This guy had 37 kills. The guy on your team? 30, no, this hacker. This guy had oh. 37 kills. He solo queued for quads, had 37 kills. So we experienced this guy earlier in the game. We were <laughs> running through the hangar area by airport. Yeah, yeah. And it was the stone wall right there. Certain guns can shoot through those walls. And he just started beaming us with a car 98 through the wall. Through the wall, knocked all four of us, killed us all with the car 98. So Damn. then, we get back from Ghoulie, get our shit back up, drop in. Sorry, this is before we realize. We drop in before the first circle closes, realize that there's only 40 people left in this huge-ass circle. So we're like, what the heck? So we start running to this low. We get a bounty, and the bounty's on this cheater. By the time we get there, <laughs> there's like, you know, maybe 20 people left. And we start killing people off and killing people off. And yeah. then we it's top three. Three teams left. There's a, a team of four, a team of three, and a team of one. This guy is perched up in this building in front of me and this other dude. Two of us, we were running twos together, pushing two at a time. He was nailing us with this car 98 constantly. Just bang, bang, bang. We kept dropping down, shielding up. For some reason, he drops out. Jumps out of the window, off the top of this building, and my buddy threw a C4, cracked him. He jumped around the side, finished, uh, 
finished off my buddy right there, and then I jump over the wall and lay into him with the MP5 and kill him. It was insane mm. how tough it was just to kill this guy. It almost ruined the game, dude. But we killed this other team, and we, we ended up winning the game, and the other team was, you know, still in the actual game chat. And they were yeah. like, dude, thank you so much. They're like, thank you guys for killing that hacker, man. He's been terrorizing. He killed off the, nearly the whole lobby. I don't know how many he had, but when we first killed us the first time, he had like 30-something kills. I think there needs, be so, there needs to be some kind of fail-safe on Activision's end that's like, hey, they, got over fifth, they killed over a quarter of the lobby. Let's take a look at this. Something yeah. should flag him. Right. That's like stupid. I mean, if, you're, if you got over, you know, 30 kills by yourself... You should probably look into that. I mean, that's yeah. that. It's a lot. I and mean, maybe more than that, forty, because I've I've gotten twenty-one, but I mean, thirty is still pretty insane. Don't you think? But how many of these top players are we seeing that quote-unquote top players, and then we're finding yeah. things of them actually being hackers the whole time? I don't know. That's ter It's it, it. I mean, a lot of times you can tell, but there's some people I'm sure that are good at it. But like it was a dead ass giveaway and that was the first experience i had another experience with a whole team of hackers who were all running bruins but you know they're cheating because their movement was awful seriously the worst they weren't slide canceling jumping around you know on the swivel nothing man they would just find somebody lock onto them and just fire away literally spray I, their whole clip that's my biggest issue with the cross play like i i like that we have it I love playing with our friends on PC, but at the end of the day, it completely ruins the game, bro. Completely ruins the It takes one hacker in one lobby, like you said, to ruin 199 people's day. Well, luckily, they're not, <clears throat> they're not invincible. You know, they are killable still, but it's just... When you got one guy wiping that. four, a whole quad team? What the hell, dude? I understand being good. Yeah. I know it's possible, but yeah. if they're doing it with a car ninety eight, <laughs> then it's suspicious. And then also too the crossbow thing the crossbow thing. I was in a game with some Randys earlier today, and this guy had a crossbow in the in the lobby. And I called him out on it. He was on our team. He was like, uh, who's running the sniper? Somebody said that. And he was like, I run a crossbow. He's like, Oh, okay, cool. I was like asking him while we were in the plane. I was like, you're on a crossbow? He's like, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I have tons of clips out. And I'm like, yeah, you need to hit me up. I need to look at those, you know? And he was like, all right. He never did. I guess I asked too many questions. But <laughs> I was like, what's your longest shot? He's like, I have a 250 meter shot with a crossbow. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, man, it's a laser. He's like, no, it's not. You know, I said, most people that use crossbows are hackers, right? He's like, that's weird. I've never seen anybody use a crossbow. And I was like, mm-hmm. Bro, we were running down this mountain. These people were like easy 300 meters out. Pinged them, okay? He nails them with this crossbow. Explosive bolt. Nails them, dude. I'm like, and I was like, dude, you got to be cheating right now. He's like, no, 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 I'm cheating. I ain't cheating. I was like, you're cheating, dude. I ended up leaving. Him. Three so. football fields away, dude. Sticking them. 350 meters. Yeah. He had a sniper scope on a crossbow. I mean, what other like what other point would it be to run a crossbow and has like a five second reload time, and you get into like an altercation? You're screwed, well, it dude. Is one shot. If you stick them with the explosive bolt, it's one shot. No, I know that, but if you have like a team of four coming at you and they surround you, you're screwed. Why else? Why would you do it? Right. It doesn't make any sense to run one. To be a troll, or you're cheating. One of the two. I'm gonna pull away my bow and arrow. I wanna wait. I wanna put away my 50 round clip machine gun and pick up a bow and arrow. Yeah, he was cheating, man. You know? There's a lot of cheaters. And when you get into the higher, you know, they say there's not skill based matchmaking. That's complete ass. That's not true. There's gotta be some sort of a rhythm algorithm where, because like, I'm getting in a lobby here lately because I've been playing a lot more. Yep. There's like a cheater almost. I'd say every like five lobbies, there's a cheater. Makes sense. Because before they came out, they said almost every lobby, there's one. Yeah. But, it's just okay, so let's easy get. To cheat now. 
if you're on PC. But I, I, I made it. a, I made a point the other like, the other night to this guy. It's like if you're cheating, I don't understand how it could be gratifying because it's mm -hmm. like you're playing the final level of a story mode. Like the first level you play is the final level. Yes. You don't get to experience anything. How do you feel good about doing that? No. You know. And especially when you're cheating and you're usually when you're cheating and getting 50 kills, you're not you're not being very uh, humble about it. You're like get good scrubs, get good. Got 50 kills, step it up. Look at these clips. I like joining people on the LFG post. They're like 1v1, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> and you'll get in there and play them. And yep. it's like, dude, you're cheating. And I report them. It's like, it's just never ending. You're doing God's work right now. All right, let's uh, let's get to the last topic here. Xbox Showcase. Uh, we have it in six days. Like we said before, we're going to be doing a full uh, reaction to it next Thursday. I'm excited about watching that together. That's going to be a lot of fun for the yeah, hype around it. But uh, let's go ahead and just talk really quickly about what you hope to see in that showcase. And uh, before we get into Overcooked, so really quick, elevator speech, go. What do you want to see in this showcase? First thing, I would like to see maybe another teaser for Elder Scrolls, just to keep that thing, you know, <laughs> that little, that juice flowing. Uh, I'd like for them to just openly say that they'll never make another Fallout game ever again. And then I want to see Jesus. some more information about Starfield. Very intrigued by that. Uh... Xbox. That's as far as Bethesda goes, yeah. But yeah. Xbox, uh, maybe some, you know, a little more shade. Throw a little more shade at PlayStation. That'd be kind of interesting to see, as far yeah. as statistics go. Uh, a, a price point, uh, actual price point to be released, maybe around the four hundred dollar mark. That'd be nice to see. Really cut the legs off of them, and uh, maybe some more explanation on uh, the whole WB thing. Ooh, could be a good announcement. What direction? They're, they're not going to have anything developed, but the direction they want to go with it. And uh, just some, you know, some ideas and thoughts to throw out there. That's pretty much it for me, though. So here'd be mine. Definitely want to see some more Halo. Want to see some gameplay from Halo. What we can, oh, yeah. what can we uh, potentially experience? Because we were thinking it's going to be open that. world. Good. Yeah. We're thinking it's going to be open world. We're seeing these teasers. It looks like it may be more of an open world-y Halo. Show us some more of the console. Right We've always sweet. No, God. I would not doubt. They came out and said they're not going to be doing Battle Royale for Halo, but money talks, so we'll see. Um, they'll do some kind of season pass for multiplayer, of course. But uh, So there's an interesting rumor. They're pulling all of their uh, Xbox Live for Golds off the stores right now. Like to buy them, like the Ultimates. So Phil Why? did just come out. So Phil just came out and said, X, "X Cloud is being released this September October for free. If you have Xbox Live for Gold, it's going to be for free. Already wrapped into your what you're paying right now. What? All right? Yeah. It starts in September or October. All the games he said most of the games on Game Pass you'll be able to play day one from your cell phone or tablet, whatever. Two. A lot of people are thinking that since they're pulling all these Xbox Live like uh, cards and stuff off these sites, that they are finally going to be taking the approach that PC does and not charging people for being able to play online. So like the standard $9.99 that you pay a month, gone for xCloud. You'll pay the extra $5 for Game Pass and stuff, but that's it. You'll pay for the service, not just to be online. Which is kind of cool, that's but... It is. So I'd like to see Halo. Love to need to see something about Forza. That's supposed to be coming out this year. I would love to see if they did acquire WB. If they could come on and say, "What's up, bitches? Boom, boom, boom. We bought WB Studios. We have Rocksteady. We have TT Games. We have Avalanche Studios. We have Monolith working on shit right now. We have the third edition into the Shadow of War franchise. They're working on a new Batman game. This Harry Potter game is legit. We have a brand new uh, Lego game in the works right now. What do you want? All Xbox exclusive." Banga banga. Done. That'd be cool. But yeah, besides that, Lord of the Rings stuff. I wish they'd announce something about Fable. Supposedly Playground Games is working on a new Fable. So I'd love to see something about oh that. God. If there's a Splinter Cell Perfect Dark maybe in the works. Um, you know, I want to see some mic drops. Some things we haven't already heard before. 
and just want to see some good gameplay. But that's basically it I'll, yeah. on my side. Yeah, mic drops, mic drops for sure. I definitely want to that's see some it. mic drops. Like when they came out that E3 and said, we just bought these four or five studios. What? Yeah, uh, you got anything else before we wrap up, before we get into some Overcooked? No, ready to slice and dice, baby. All right. Thank you guys for listening to episode three of the podcast. We do, again, we do podcasts every single week for the channel. Uh, we'll be back again next week. This will be found on YouTube and Spotify. So if you're an audio listener, thank you for listening. And we will see you guys next week. And we are now going to go ahead and get into the gameplay portion of our live stream. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys.